All right, sir. Now? So once again, all is clear, loud and clear. I can hear you properly. I hope your yes. my voice is also coming through. Yes, yes, your voice is coming yes, through. Okay, okay. So good evening, everyone, and good evening, Dr. Madhusudan Raj, sir. Uh, welcome to, once again on our platform, Menza. Uh, let me just quickly introduce you, sir, uh, so everyone in the listeners panel also can, uh, you know, mm-hmm. just get the idea uh, why we are here and why we are talking on the subject. Uh, Dr. Madhusudan Raj, sir, is an Austrian economist. He's a social scientist, educationist, and health enthusiast. Uh, sir has uh, done his uh, PhD doctors uh, from uh, BNSGU and uh, currently he's a professor in the college. Uh, so today when we decided to do this subject, the topic of current situation of war that we all, all know going on between Ukraine and Russia, it's been almost mm-hmm. going to be a month now and uh, how it is affecting uh, our Indian economy and people of India. And uh, mm-hmm. the first person that came to my mind about discussing thing was only one, was Dr. Madhusudan Raj, sir, uh, because I've heard mm-hmm. his sessions before, and I know how he, he can give, uh, you know, a great insight and put uh, a great light on the subject, sir. So uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, Nirzar, for inviting me. Uh, see. As I said in my last talk also with Jigar, yeah. trading is very important for all of us uh, because through trade only we all become prosperous, rich, because our, on our own we cannot produce anything. I mean, maybe we can produce one or two things, but that is not enough for survival. And that is right. the reason why trading is very important. So exchange. So what you produce I buy from you by using the things that I produce in surplus. Now, when you're trading locally, like I trade with you, I become rich. If I trade with somebody who is in Rajasthan or Delhi, I become more rich. Similarly, if you cross these uh, state boundaries, political boundaries, and you trade with a Russian or a Ukrainian or an American or a Chinese or a, a Britisher, you become even more rich, more prosperous, because then you can acquire the things that you cannot produce on your own in this country. Now, you know that India is a developing country, or what they call the emerging market economy. Hmm. And we depend Hmm. heavily on international trade on other countries for growth and development, because we don't have everything that is required for you know, building a civilization. For example, the first key ingredient that India imports from outside, including Russia, is oil. If you see our, uh, if you see our international trade bill, then number one item is petroleum products, oil. So our major trading partners, you know, major imports comes from, first of all, China, because China is also a big oil producer as well as many other industrial items that we cannot produce in India, we have to import for China. So China, number one, then you have countries like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, because these are all oil producing countries. America, we are, you know, we are importing so many things from America. These are all the goods, you know, we also import a lot of know-how from outside because in India, we are not, not just services, the knowledge, Mm -hmm. because... So right. when you talk about, let's say, for example, when you talk about make in India, I mean, you, how are you going to make knowledge in India? It's very difficult. We are not doing any innovation in this mm-hmm. country. If you see the innovation index, we are nowhere. So yes. whatever technology, IT you talk about or anything else we are using is, we, you know, we have imported from outside. Now right. that is when you are trading, peace is very important for, it's a precondition for trade. So whenever there is peace at the international level, you know, we can trade with as many partners as possible and we can gain from them. And of course, they are also going to get things from us. Although we don't export that much, our trade deficit is pretty big because as I said, we are this, you know, so-called emerging market economies. So we don't have much to offer to the countries, but we have a lot of to gain from them. So peace, when there is peace, we gain. Now, when there is war, of course, the war is going to have an impact on the Indian economy because 
we are well connected with the world you know our economy depends on the world imports whether that is china or america or saudi arabia united arab emirates or russia right for example indian economy depends on russian fertilizer imports mainly so as far as i know around 70 75 80 percent of fertilizer use in india comes from russia and you know that india is still an agrarian economy so let's say punjab haryana and all this uh, what we call bread basket of india wheat producing you know places we require a fertilizer in agriculture without that the crop will not be enough to feed 1.4 billion population now if there is war going on in russia and ukraine these imports are going to be in trouble because there is a war going on war is war means destruction remember one thing there there are many mainstream economists who will tell you that you know war is good for the you know economy but that's not true you know a war destruction can never be good for anyone so one thing is this it can have a huge impact on indian agriculture and through that it can create a lot of problem for indians another problem we are going to have or we already are facing now mm. post election you know the elections are over and you can see now daily mm. the prices of petrol and diesel gas are going up why because in international market the price of petrol and gas and everything is going up mm. uh it's because of war russia is a main producer of gas and they have huge reserves of oil also so there is a war going on all this trade is disrupted american government the biden government has also imposed lot of sanction on russia now highest number of sanctions so for them to trade with other countries is also becoming difficult for example right now at this moment we use dollar as international currency so in every international transaction countries use dollar that is because of the so called you know if you have i don't know whether you heard about this term or not there is a system called petro dollar that was put in place by then richard nixon the president of america and his uh, foreign secretary henry kissinger so so they told saudi arabia back then that you use dollar only for petroleum oil trade with everybody else and we will provide you protection in this region like you know we will allow the saud family to remain in power in saudi arabia so american government has a huge military base in saudi arabia these are all international political games that go on and that's the reason why we have to game dollars and also obviously american economy is stronger because of their you know hundreds of years of capitalist system they no longer are capitalist they are becoming more and more socialist now but still the american economy is stronger than china or russia okay mm. so that's why their currency is being used its term is sound currency dollar is sound compared to other currencies it's not absolutely sound but compared to other currencies so that's why everybody uses dollar now when R- american government is putting sanction on russia they cannot trade because their you know we are going to for example we have to give them dollar and if we trade with russia america is going to scold us they are already you know biden government has biden personally has already made a command that indian government's response on russia is shaky hmm. now whether you agree with this or not or whether you like this or not it doesn't matter sanctions are there sanctions are there uh, i think today and tomorrow all the ministers are coming to india because indian stand on this war is neutral so far in every so you know in united nations security council or united nations human rights commission which obviously the american and partners are not liking hmm. uh, indian government is confused right now what to do <laughs> that confused I, that, that state that was of going confusion. to be my next question anyway <laughs> that was i was, I was going <laughs> yeah. to ask you all that that what do you yeah. what, what is your view whether we the, the staying neutral whether it is a good uh, tactics or bad tactics what do you think sir <laughs> see staying neutral forever as a principle stand is always good but indian government has not been neutral throughout the centuries Correct. so in that case this looks more like hypocritical 
so mm. far india was siding with america on everything it was kind of used by the american government mm. as a handle to control china okay right. or to you know and Amer- indian government was using america to control china as well as pakistan also for example right okay now suddenly the government is realizing that american government will only look for their own self interest like any other government all politicians are all very selfish if india is going to look for its self interest american government is also going to look for its self interest right, right. russian government is looking for its self interest that is the reason why putin has attacked ukraine because he fears that nato countries are now on its border and they are you know kind of uh, putting missiles you know nuclear uh, icbms in ukraine so that's why he has attacked you know ukraine to just stop all these things from happening mm-hmm. so now taking a neutral stand is not going to help in future for example you are not supporting united nations security council resolution against russia right now you abstain mm-hmm. you did not even remain neutral you mm-hmm. abstain from it it's like staying absent now in future for example if china is going to do the same thing with india china is going to That's attack right. india india will have no moral standing in international mm. you know at the international platform because they did not come they did not you know kind of condemn russia or putin mm. whether you are right or wrong it doesn't really matter when it comes to politics right. okay right what what matters is yeah exactly whether these people see you as your friend or not so at mm. that time if they will ask for aid from other countries they will say mm. well you did not support us when you know putin was attacking ukraine now why should we support you when china is grabbing your land so these dangers are always there because you are setting precedent now where is one country grabs another country it's okay mm. right basically these are all you know let me tell you very frankly these are all gangs right they are fighting for territorial areas so mm. like one dog coming into other dog's area the other dog is going to run after that dog right mm. political boundaries are nothing but territorial monopoly is used by the people for exploitation of the local public so when china will do the same thing india will have no moral ground of saying anything and remember when you are following might is the right principle to make mm. policies mm. then other countries are mightier than you Mm. like you know i can discuss things like kashmir for example tomorrow if china comes into kashmir for example then what are you going to do ultimately mm. you will have to fight all this rhetoric and jingoism on whatsapp is not going to be enough that can fool it's the local public enough. but yeah. it's not but when when it comes to fighting a war you cannot fight war because as i said oil we 100% depend on foreign countries for our oil, oil imports we have mm. not a single drop of oil in this country everything comes from outside so mm. if war is going to escalate mm. then what is going to happen without oil reserves you cannot fight any war you can mm. buy rafale jet from france but you need oil to fly that right. jet and you don't have that oil right. right so right now this confusion is going to call you know become very costly in future for this government they will have to you decide whether you are with america or you are with china and russia going with china and russia is not going to help because these two countries are not reliable partners they are putin okay. is also having a lot of ambitions for territorial gain he has the eurasian you know union you know uh, dream china has dreams of silk route 2 and everything okay mm. and these are communist countries their ideologies are also not good for the future of this country you need market mm-hmm. you need trading you are mm-hmm. see for example if tomorrow america attacks india and they grab india i will mm-hmm. say that is better than china grabbing india because chinese are ruthless authoritarian people they are communist and mm-hmm. when communists come to power they are going to kill you they are not going to ask you questions americans mm-hmm. these people are still market and freedom oriented they are going to ask you questions and they are going to worry mm-hmm. about your human rights chinese and russians will not worry about human rights right. you know for example in past the russian dictator stalin killed millions of people in russia itself ukrainian okay. war is nothing new for them they starved to that millions of ukrainian you know in the beginning of the 20th century when he came to power chinese right. mao tse tung he killed millions of chinese 
you know because of his false you know communist you know ideas mm-hmm. and if you are going to be ruled by these two countries you are going to be partner with these two people you have to be very careful mm-hmm. so even if american government is bad like biden government is very weak right now that's the reason why putin has dared to attack ukraine you have to understand what kind of ideology you are siding with because in international affairs as i said the moment you start taking you know sides war is going to come to your door right either you right. either you stay neutral non aligned from the very beginning mm-hmm. or you pick the right side right mm-hmm. because and that and indian so, government so, is so not the, being mm-hmm. being neutral for such a long time uh you know we are into the war from last one month almost someone was asking me in the in this uh, ch- ch- the listeners chat also that is this war is about to end or what <laughs> but we don't know that yet but be a, a, as an indian uh, uh, you know as per the uh, uh, general uh, people they don't know uh, whether to take side is wrong, right or wrong and uh, how it is slowly and steadily affecting their day to day life is something that they don't really know about as if now so uh, you know <laughs> it is going to affect them see the badly it, it of course it, i mean if tomorrow the war spreads everywhere and turns into world war 3 imagine mm-hmm. let's say chinese bombers coming over the sky of surat city <laughs> 50 60 100 bombers mm-hmm. and dropping 5000 10000 bombs in one visit imagine the situation you know of surat city and your house you know you are sitting and the right. bombs are dropping everywhere the right. problem with indian public is they have never seen a war whatever war right. has happened in indian history let's say now 70 years all are in the border area but right. this time right. around it is not going to be like that if there is a right. world war 3 now everybody is equipped with nuclear bombs and when they start dropping let's say surat is industrial city so it will be a prime target mm-hmm. right in a, in and hazira we, belt lnt LN, yes, company cannot, produces military cannot, tanks yes <laughs> yes yeah yeah and uh, i was just saying that that uh, we cannot uh, you know ignore uh, our power plants like kakrapar and all the which are very near to surat and the effect of bomb Absolutely. on that particular place is, is going to be you know disastrous no exactly and the, and the and the most important thing is talking about war is one thing and fighting a war is another thing People okay and in today's war, war yeah only, <laughs> yeah that but that whatsapp rhetoric war you will mm. never come to know when it will result into actual war actual. because you see you you talk i give you one example okay mm. you mm. talk about all these things to for the local public vote and all this i'm talking about politicians yes. but you cannot fool the foreigners So for example when Amit Shah in parliament openly said that we are going to take Aksai Chin from China and POK mm. from Pakistan Chinese mm. spies are sitting in the parliament they are listening everything mm. and immediately after that they started movement on the Ladakh frontier because mm. they want to guard their areas they and mm. and I know Indians have the you know dream of freeing Tibet also because right. the road to right. tibet goes from that area now chinese government is planning 100 years in advance they are not going to sit back and listen to all this kind of things they will mm. take as a credible threat even mm. though let's say amit shah is you know talking about all this to you know appease the local crowd for the election these things have repercussion in international politics mm. even if you are going to grab all this area what is the need of talking about it so loudly in a lok sabha exactly i mean exactly. that's that's a that's politically stupid you know <laughs> you cannot do nah. that yeah no nah, nah, i mean how many how words. many how <laughs> you yes. cannot do that you yeah, because yeah. chinese are listening to you have you ever mm. heard chinese politicians saying we are going to do this Never. with india no they are quietly mm. planning everything uh-huh. and when they will do it they will do it they are not going to talk <laughs> about it we are in right. fact they are going to be firing our missiles also <laughs> that's very dangerous okay now imagine <laughs> if that missile instead of dropping in pakistan went in china that yeah. can start a war as i said in my last mm. you know talk with jigar that yeah. internationally wars can start with mistake most of the war starts like that and these yes. politicians they don't have the sensitivity to understand what war can do indian yeah. public also don't understand who are jumping you know like anything right now and 
know about war and everything see you can mm. threaten the weaker public when your right. opponent is weak you can mm. you know drum your you know chest but when you're you know seeing russia and china these guys are not weaker they don't even consider you as their you know counterpart their their competition is with america america on the yeah so these pe- yeah so right now you are not even strong your economy mm. is so bad right now you cannot right. fight a war right, right. so if, we have if the sir, if I'm, last yeah 30 yeah, 40 yeah. seconds only and uh, it is yeah. always a pleasure to hear you it, 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 this time time on menza is always so much shorter i would love to have you again uh, on yeah, some sure. day on on the topic of your choice again because we love to listen sure. to you sir uh, i'll sure, give you uh, yes yes i'll give you the speaking part for the last 20 seconds to close this as you like sir thank you yeah i was saying that you know if america is going to impose sanctions on india now for not taking the stand life is going to become much more difficult for indians so my <laughs> advice to indians is my advice to indians is do not talk about war if you want peace then ask for peace everywhere if you are going to you